Hit record. All right, everybody, welcome to the March 4th uh, Tinderbox session. Um, in typical format, what we do is we go around and have new people introduce themselves. Uh, we then have uh, anybody introduce any projects or issues uh, they're working, any projects they want to share or challenges they're trying to overcome. And then we dig into uh, other topics that people may have. Um, we actually have a, a, a demo for today. Roger, Alexander, and I, over the last couple of weeks, um, have been working on a integration of Tinderbox with ChatGBT, so we want to demonstrate that today. Uh, and then um, last in last week's session, Mark uh, Bernstein and company had talked about um, you know using um, Mermaid JavaScripts to be able to do uh, visualizations, and so uh, I want to just demonstrate on how easy that is to do. Um, I was within a you know fifteen minutes able to take the mer uh, the Mermaid. Uh, elements and, and and integrate those in to, to demonstrate how you can do that within uh, within Tinderbox. And then likewise, I'll revisit a uh, a radar chart model I built about seven months ago um, uh, using that same kind of same methodology. So if we have time, we can go through that as well. Cool. So uh, let's jump in. Uh, I don't see anyone new. Um, I haven't seen um, Kim for a while. Dave G, I don't think I've met you before. Maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, uh, you're on mute. If you, I can't hear you, or I can, or your microphone's not working, or something. I'm digging the code background, though. Yeah, still. So, uh, can you guys? Can you hear him, or is it just me? Everyone. No one can hear him. No, I think he's muted. <clears throat> Yeah, he's I can't hear anyone. It's not, he's unmuted. It looks like he's just the source is not working. How about this, perfect. Hey, fantastic. Uh, so uh, my name is uh, my name is Dave George. It's a it's a pleasure to join the community. I picked up Tinderbox after flirting around with it for good lord twenty years. I never really got it initially, and it's frankly only been. As I've amassed thousands and thousands of notes and documents and pieces of information that I've been collecting over time that I've realized all I'm doing is collecting. I'm not really analyzing. I'm I'm like a, a squirrel, squirreling away lots of little digital nuts, but they're not really doing much for me. And the notion of trying to get a framework in place to tie everything together and help me make sense of it is the thing that actually impelled me forward. Um Back in the day, I used to play with HyperCard, uh, loved HyperCard, love uh, love Apple Talk, excuse me, uh, HyperTalk, and the uh, the Apple script that's a, a derivative of that. I use that for a lot of integration in a bunch of Unixy things that I do, and I'm just super excited to be kind of delving into the product, learning about it, and uh, and, and joining the community and listening and learning. Some of the videos, Michael, that you've created and others have have been very helpful as I've been trying to kind of ascend the the steep learning curve because it is it is tough initially but uh but it's it's really exciting and gratifying so thanks so much yeah, fantastic welcome and do you have, can you explain like what kind of project are you trying to work on right now and so right now honestly um there is no project that i i have that i'm applying tinderbox to i do project management work i work with a lot of unix related technologies I'm coming up to speed on Power BI and some other visualization frameworks. So I'm in a, a mode where I'm learning and absorbing a lot of information. And rather than just have, like I say, thousands of text files that are being organized in hundreds of directories, uh, I capture almost everything in text on the terminal. iTerm is just the best thing since sliced bread for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... I, I need to develop baseline mastery of the of the product before I can actually start using it and thinking about it as a solution for the various things that I'm doing. So at, at this point, it's it's mostly aspirational. It's it's not actual with regard to product. Got it. Yeah. My my experience with the, what it has been though is don't wait to get for it to be perfect. Yep. You know, like when you have whenever you before you have a kid, everyone says don't wait to have a perfect moment to have a kid. Just have the kid and figure it out. I think that you have the same thing with your knowledge when it comes to Tinderbox. You know, it, it, it evolves over time. So what's been my experience for programming and scripting and everything else, cooking, art, music, whatever, 
you have to have something to do and then you have to do something, right? If you, if you aren't applying the knowledge, then it's just spinning around looking for something to connect with. So absolutely. I, uh, I get it a hundred percent. Now the one nice fun, fun thing with Tinderbox though, if you don't mind wasting an hour or two here and there, come up with some smaller projects to give yourself some short-term wins. Yep. You know, and then, and then kind of incrementally go through there. So say that again, you have to have something to do. I want to, I want to write that down. What did you say? You have to have something to do and then what? And then you have to do something. <laughs> awesome. I like that a lot. Okay. So uh, anybody else want to chime in? Um, topics, projects you're working on? Otherwise, uh, maybe uh, Roger and I can jump into our, our, our chat GBT demo if, uh, if people are interested in that. What do we got? Anybody have any uh, thoughts, ideas? Or shall we jump in? I just had a comment in terms yeah, of just the Tinder box, if I in my, may speak here. Um, just to preface the idea of our previous uh, new guy here, that uh, Tinderbox is, is a way to actually capture complexity. Uh, for example, I'm working on a – as a scrum master where I work, uh, change management is in working at a different team level, trying to get the teams to be self-managed. That's a different type of concept, and trying to get the organization to recognize that requires a lot of complexity of studying. And so Tinderbox to me is actually taking those type of – it's a tool to actually allow me to look at these different idioms and different psychologies of how do you actually turn an organization into a hierarchical, into more of a, uh, you know, a uh, let the teams be self-managed. That's a whole different paradigm. So uh, I'm looking at different organizational design, leadership, behaviors, and there's no tool out there that can capture these various paradigms. So there, it's just vast of complexities, emerging complexities, five C's of knowledge and managing. So I'm thinking, uh, in short, that you need a tool uh, to try to capture that, and it's uh, a paradigm type of tool, and that's Tinderbox. It just, uh, it's phenomenal, and I just want to just uh, thank everybody for having this type of uh, this meetup. Yeah, I'll and, shut up. And, and for me, the really big thing is not just capturing the, you know, it's not just collection like Dave is saying. And seeing the relationships, and yeah, tr exactly, yeah, right. It's not just like capturing like what you're saying and the relationships. All that's great, but at the end of the day, if if you can't have an output, if you can't have a contribution that affects some change whether or not that output is a written document, a podcast, knowledge you've generated that you then verbalize somehow, uh, then it all kind of comes for naught. So um, to, to Dave's a point- Amen to that, yeah. Uh, it's really critical to start with like, even if, you're, uh, even if your goal ends up moving in the end, starting with a goal to, so that you start on your journey and then halfway through your journey, you might actually realize that you need to change your endpoint. But the fact that you got started and you got there is, is what's incredibly important. And the beautiful thing about Tinderbox is the flexibility it gives you to be able to change paths easily without necessarily having to start from the very beginning. Like you can easily go in and change the names of attributes and prototypes and the data types without any destructive risk of destruction of content, for, for example. Um, it's a really just incredibly flexible and powerful thing. Yeah, Mr. Bill. Uh, hi everybody. So I just thought I'd bring up a little beginner um, challenge I had. Um, I'm keeping, as I mentioned before, but I'm, I'm keeping records and I'm doing it starting out with this program very visually. Um, so I've got adornments that capture um, things that I did this day and another things I did that day. So I have things in context by my adornments. Um, so recently I had to go back and search for something I did last June. And where is it? <laughs> and it was hard for me to find. So a, a search sort of didn't work. And then I did it and used an agent. I did a search using, um, I guess it's called an agent. Yeah. Yeah. If, if name equals, in, if name includes or contains one of those words, I forget and show those. So I got my result. I found my little note, but it came completely out of context. I didn't, I still don't know where it is in the map. Um, so it's making me lean towards, um, and Michael, I think you push this to, or, or promote it, uh, outline view where things could have been much more, um, easier and seen in context as opposed to map view of using, um, adornments. 
So that was a, a little challenge I had. That might be a newbie kind of a thing. But trying to search for something um, that's <laughs> within context in a map was not so easy. So, so I, I lost the context. So quick question. When you say a dormant, um, can you can you demonstrate? A box. I know. So essentially what you're saying is I used an adornment and then I would put notes on top of that adornment in a way to help me kind of visually see how things were organized. Is that what you're saying you were doing? Yeah. On this day, I synthesized X product and I followed these steps. Got it. Um, and so here's what I did. One, two, three, four, five and to make this product. And then the next day I made something else and I've got all so my steps. I, I think and, you're on something. I think you're onto something really important. And so let's let's run with this for a few minutes if you don't mind. So no, let's, that's what I brought it up. So so let's say I go here and I'm sharing my screen and I've got a map view. And we're gonna have an adornment, right? Uh, actually, you know what? I need to move. All right, I'll figure that out later. I move this down here. Um there we go. So let's say so we're gonna create an adornment right now. Like that. So we right mouse click and we say adornment, right? Yep. And what would you title this? Um, well, let's just make it a, a recipe for tomato soup. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I did. I, I synthesized. Uh, you know, yeah, that's that's good. And we've right. got the what, what, what would I put tomatoes on and um, added. I'm just making this up as we go. Yeah. Um, um, added uh, four, um, crushed four tomatoes or something. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, you know, this is just silly, but, but, um, um, slice quarter of an onion. I'm, you may not like my tomato soup. Um, and then, um, um, I don't know, quarter water. <laughs> this is just terrible recipe. Don't follow this. Uh, yeah, um, carrots. Heat, heat, you know, heat a boil for for five minutes. <laughs> Again, don't follow this. I'm just making this up. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what I did. Um, tomato soup. Let's call that batch one or something. Okay. You know, this is my trial. All right, and then so, and the next time I do it, I might use some other completely different ingredients or whatever. Okay, so uh, I, I completely get it. This is a really super cool idea. Um, now, to a certain extent, this is, and if you go back and forth, this is why we've been having conversations in the backstage, at least lately, as for a a uh, you know what we've loosely been calling a diagram view. Um, but we can come to that in just a minute. So. You come in, you start in map view, and you just go like this. And now later you want to, what do you, what did you say you want to find? Well, now I've made batch, I'm up to batch 20. And maybe I went and and entered uh, a uh, a batch in a, in a um, competition. <laughs> and uh, I want to go find, the, what, are, what are my notes about the competition? It's in one of these 20 batches mm -hmm. of, of, of adornments. And and I go, where is it? You know, which which batch did I did I send out for the competition? Okay. Uh, it's Perfect. exactly which product did I analyze at Brookhaven National Laboratory? But tomato soup sounds yeah. more interesting. All right. So, so this this is great. And this is a really uh, effective way of looking at it. Now we pop over to outline view. You'll see here we've got a bunch of notes. Right. And over yeah. here, and if you go over here, we've got our, 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 our in our batch view, we've got this. Now, I'm going to I'm going to suggest something to you in just a minute. Uh, and I might need because I, I don't use maps and adornments that on, that often. Um, so I might need Mr. Anderson's help real quick. So uh, on the adornment, uh, Mark, if we do the on add. Right. So let's say I go in, let's so let's say let's go here real quick and I'm going to go in and add prototypes on this quickly just to help us with this. Um, so I'll go like that in the prototypes. We'll call this P, P note. And I'm going to add in, oops, I'm going to add in a type. All right. And type. And let's call this the next uh, attribute we'll add in is called batch name. All right. And again, like you, I'm brainstorming. I might totally, and then over here, you'll see I'm going to set these in as a set and I'm going to set this as a string. 
Okay. So we'll create those. And so like, you know, I'm kind of brainstorming this out a little bit as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to assign this prototype to all these notes so that they're there. And so if you go back here, you can see that we can see these notes have that prototype now, right? Yeah. All with me so far. So we haven't really changed much other than the fact that we added a prototype. So one of the things that you were saying is I'm looking for the elements that are on the, t that are on the adornment tomato soup batch one. Right, that's kind no, of. No, I'm looking for a note. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm looking for. I, the I'm note. looking. I'm looking for a note, and it might be in one of twenty batches. Okay. I don't know where the note is. Do you know the name of the note? Um, I know it contains. Well, call it competition. In my case, it would contain something called BNL, but but uh, and, and where, yeah. and what, so, and so it might contain. It? In this case, it might contain um, water. Or, or something and not all of the, the other one might contain all the others might say chicken broth or something but one of them contains water okay and you where know? where would it when you say contains where would it contain that would it contain that in the name of the and note some other adornment so in an adornment for batch two okay what do you mean so, you've got, so this is you've, this, got, you've got tomato soup batch one is an adornment correct okay so there's another uh, uh, adornment that's tomato soup batch two. All right. So let's do that real quick. Let me, we're, this, this is critically important. So we're just going to step through this until we get it right. All right. So we go like this. I'm going to move that up here. And so now we've got another adornment and we're going to call this batch two. And yeah. So what am I now having in batch two? I'll call it milk just for the heck of it. Call it what? Milk. It's just something that's different than batch one. Okay. Your right. um, your name is still the same with the dormant. Oh, oh, I thought I saved it. All right. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Now I got 20 of these. Yeah. One of them has milk. All right. I want to I want to know about the 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 I want to find something about milk. And I want to know with what context is is that how does it fit into my organization? Right. If I, could, if I do an agent and go look for milk, it'll find it'll find milk, but I won't know the adornment that it's in, so I won't know the context. Everything else having to do with batch two. Right. So, so again, here's a couple of things. So, adornments are a visual affordance of map view only. They're not there for structure. Right, um, and that's how I started using it as a beginner. Right. And, and whereas outline, like if you had a, a, an element of outline, you could have structure. And we're going to go through that and show you and do both parts um, as we step through this. Now, there's ways to you know leverage and use adornments. And Mark, uh, uh, interesting, if I'm not mistaken, it's the on ad, right? So uh, Yes. So, so an adornment, oddly, an adornment has the equivalent of a container on ad. The, the right. act of putting a note on top of an adornment will right. fire its on ad. So let me let me go ahead and do this. Now watch what happens now when I do this. So if I'm going to go down to my prototypes, I'm going to add again, we're I'm, these are probably the wrong names for your context, but we're going to go ahead and call this element, right? So I've got a type, a bench uh, a batch name and an element uh, is some uh, user generated attributes that I've created. So if we're in map view and you have an on add here, you could say uh element equals uh, how do I, uh, Mark? What would I say to get the um, because I, I'd have to. I, I think if if you to, to answer Bill's question, what he wants to know is note milk needs to know it's part of batch two. So if yeah, so batch two point, sets would... type or uh, whichever one you're calling it, um, batch number, batch name. Yeah, so batch. If name... it sets batch name to whatever, you, well, batch two or whatever you're calling it, then batch... any note that has been on. Um, on that adornment will know. Right. Right. Um, I mean, this points to the problematic way of, of, of trying to use um, adornments as a query. It's actually very... Right. It, it's very nice to look at. I can see what I did on each day mm -hmm. visually. It's pleasing. Uh, yeah, more no, pleasing I, than looking at... Right, but in order to facilitate um, searching, what you do is you do something like batch name equals name adornment. So what you're saying is when I when I when I add milk to this, you're gonna yeah. see batch name becomes tomato soup batch two, which is then you can search on. 
So if yeah. you ever find milk, you now know milk was part of batch two. Okay. All right. So by uh, just uh, just a, a wrinkle to bear in mind uh, is that so that's that's your your starting point. If you were to now move milk into on top of the first adornment, it would change because it's a string attribute. It can only hold one value. It would change from batch two to batch one. Now that probably is likely what you want to do, but it's just something to bear in mind because it, if you're ex exploring things, um, maybe, maybe. It, it, it is worth bearing in mind. Maybe. So it might be, for instance. It might be, for instance, because you you know you you have you have the ingredient milk, uh, and you only you, you don't want to make two milk notes on your map, um, but it might need to take part in several batches. So what you could do is make um, the the attribute you use uh, a set. So every time you move milk onto a different adornment, it, its set picks up a thing. So you know, okay, I've used it at some time or permanently in batch one, batch three, and batch nine is, is another way you can build off this. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, let, um, let, let's, okay. let's, let's demonstrate that, right? So let's, let's take a big step back. So we've got a note called milk, and we pull that note over here, and let's say we now move that over to, and you'll notice over here while you were talking, I added the on add to batch one as well. So if I now move milk, milk over here, you'll see that milk changes to batch one, Milk change bat changes to batch two, right? Now, if you know, and again, this is, there's another thing we'll want to think about in here in just a minute, but let's go ahead here and I'm going to say, I now want to, uh, and as we talked about earlier, the, the Tinderbox is really gracious when it allows you to change things like this. So I'm going to change the attribute of batch one, its type from string to set, okay? So now what that allows me to do is I have batch two in this one. Now, if I move milk to batch one, um, ah, that should have worked. Uh, just a minute. The set. Oh, I know what I did. And then what we need to do is go back to our on ads and we say plus equals. Okay. Because now what we're saying is take what already exists in batch name and then add anything new to you to, to you have it. So if I do this, you're now going to see that milk is now associated with batch one and batch two. Now that doesn't really work in your context because you want to leave milk here and you want milk there. Right. So I would make a different note. Right. But, well, yeah. but the question is, do you want to make a different note or based on what we were talking about before uh, in, in our previous classes, where if I go to resources folder and we'll go here and we'll call this ingredients. And we'll call this one milk. And then we have tomato and we have carrot, right? So what you could do is have a resources folder that pulls these original notes into your map view via an agent. And then when then you can be dragging those, those, those aliases of that, of that note milk onto those attributes. So then now you know this, uh, this ingredient I call milk I've now used in these five different batches. And we can demonstrate that to you right now if you'd like to go down that path. But that would be a, a, um, another way of looking at it. Yeah, it, it requires um, thoughtful planning, <laughs> like making adornment names attributes, um, which I had not thought about when I started making my collection of notes. Well, well, the yeah. beautiful thing about this, though, is because of the flexibility of Tinderbox, right Right now, we hadn't thought about this before when we put all of these on this, right? You see that? Right. None of these are yeah. populated. But because we did this on add, all I need to do is hold down the option key, select all of those, drag them off of, oops, hang on, boil for five minutes, okay. Um, all I need, uh, I don't know what I did, what did, what did I get in here? I moved something in there. That's what I did wrong. Okay. So then all you need to do is drag them off. And now they all are going to take on that. So you can use your same process you've been doing and simply do the on add and have them all capture that name. Yeah. Okay. That's part of your, that's part of your uh, but, but Michael, this is not an unreasonable request. Certainly your way is more elegant. But it is possible to write these queries without having made it easy. It just is a little bit harder. 
Oh, let, let me quickly sketch some some ways. You might know the name of the note that you're looking for. You just don't know where it is. Correct. Right. I, I mean, you you know the exact name, but you don't know in which container or what's go where it is. Correct. Uh, so you can make an agent whose query is name equal equals the name that you know. That's what I did. Right. Uh, and find will do that too. Uh, now, if you, you can, of course, go to the original of the alias that this found and say, oh, that note is on this adornment and I'm done. But you might need to do this in an action. And the action uh, can do this by looking at the adornment of the original of the note. Okay. Okay. Well, how would but you we have, have an alias. Mark, 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 the Mark, original Mark. of the alias is what we it gives us the original note. Correct. The alias itself isn't on the adornment. It's the original. Right. So we can ask for uh, the adornment on which the original uh, resides. So how how would you do that, Mark? So let's do let's let's experiment with this right now. So let's say we're we're over here. We run an agent and we say uh, name, name equals milk. Name equals ah, sorry, milk, milk. Okay. So we've got now two notes that equal milk, and let's delete that other one because this is uh, not what we're going for. Now. So now we have one one note that equals milk. So what you're right. saying is I could come in here and say, show me the original in a new tab, which would bring oh. me, show me milk on on that adornment. Then I'd see it right away. What? That was just a menu choice. <laughs> that was just a menu choice. Yes. That I wasn't aware of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, now, Mark, you were saying, Mark Bernstein, you were saying something that, was that what you were saying or were you saying something different? I thought you were saying, show me the adornment that milk is on and I don't know how to do that. Um, What you would, I think, I may, uh, I may be wrong, but I think that the adornment designator in this context, oh, uh, no, that's not going to work. Oh, uh, I take that back. What you would have to do is uh, look what we're inside. I'll uh, construct a list of everything we're inside, and we'll be inside two things, our container and our adornment. Remove the container, and the remaining item is the adornment on which we reside. Okay, so in this context... Um... Right now, I'm on route, and I'm not. I'm not contained in anything. So uh, I, I wasn't aware of this. This is the but, case. But you're inside an adornment. That's that's what I do. Milk is well, inside an adornment. Cool. That's what. That's super cool. So if we do this, um, we've got tomato soup batch two. So if we run another agent, and we say, "Whoops, let me do, do it again." Run another agent, and we say, um inside that should return the milk is that correct or do i need uh, because there's only i, I think so oh does. wow mind-blowing very cool never knew that yeah oh, now, this has been a week last couple of weeks i've been writing lots of strange actions and the action language really has gotten good enough to do all sorts of weird things. Um, but on what you just did, didn't you have to know the batch in advance? Yeah, in this context, we did. But now well, let's let's play with it a little bit. So that's that one. And then if we go here, we could ask it. Um, this is interesting. So if we if we now know, let's go. Where where's our first agent? So we know milk's here. So this is milk. Then how could we know what what um let me actually let, let what me try, a it. No, let me let me try this as a stamp. Maybe we could say, um is there a way to ask milk what 
what it, what path, what what it's inside. Do you know if there's action code for doing that? Yeah. Can I, uh, well, container will give you the container. Okay. Let's take a look at that real quick. But the adornment isn't a container. The adornment's not a container, or is it? Let's see. The adornment's not a container. Right. Um, well, we can ask. We could say container original or. Give me a moment to think and let yeah. me come back. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Right. So what you guys are, it, this is interesting conversation. It means I can keep my fun to work with maps and visual looking. Um, but I was thinking, as I mentioned, that this is where an outline view, it would uh, eliminate all of this um, because you'd have everything structured if, if I had chosen to organize everything in an so outline. What, what, I, I can explain one of the confusions here is it, it sort of goes back to, to how things came to be as they are. And that is that adornments are effectively uh, a, 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 um, a map only device. Um, and queries work across the piece. Uh, and as such, if you write an, uh, sorry, an agent query, uh, it doesn't return, it doesn't know about adornments because they only exist in maps. And if you're, if you're not in a map, then you get something back that you can't see. Um, so that's sort of, I think, the, the, the origin story of this. Um, but as we've just been seeing, you can do things like you, you, you can test that whether you're inside, i.e. on top of an adornment, uh, what I think is missing at the moment, but I see Mark thinking furiously, is um, perhaps that I, I think that the the, the 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 reverse question: Am I inside an adornment? Isn't currently, or, or certainly it's not. There isn't an action that does that for you. There there may be something we can confect. Well, that little That's menu it. choice of find the original. Um, mm. If I can go look at the, if I can go find the original. In the map view, then I can. It's immediately clear what the adornment. Yeah. Is. The the other thing to bear in mind is that um, just in case people, another thing that um, you may be not aware of is if you're on a map, if you just start blind typing, I with nothing selected, you just start typing the name of the note. Well, um, Tinderbox will try and match it and will move the the map to show you the thing. So if you just start typing milk, it should. Right. There you go. It's top top left of the window. See. Likewise, if I start typing water, it automatically jumps and finds the note name water. So that that's another way that doesn't involve anything more than uh, Tinderbox making best effort. Now, now obviously, if you've got lots of names that aren't sort of that unique. This won't work so well, but if if you if there's something that you know is unlikely to be um, whose name is and it's the name of the note we're talking about, it's title. Um, if you have something whose title is unlikely to be mixed up with something else, literally just typing. If you if you want to work in this visual space, um, then just typing the name of the note, blind typing it, will in most cases cause Tinderbox to select and bring into a sort of effectively scroll the map. Uh, to bring it in the visible space. Okay. Well, let's suppose let's suppose that I've got twenty batches that have out of the twenty batches, four of them have milk. Well, that uh, won't work because it's trying to find a note. So, right, and, uh, and this, that's right. I have one. I will have to find the right the the right one that I'm looking for. I know that my note contains milk. Or includes, I, f I think the word is contains, and in, in that finds it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll find all four of those notes, um, and then I've got to find the specific one of those that I'm looking for. Well, well, the other thing I'd say here is that this is a moment um, w w when you meet this sort of thing. is is It's always a good moment to sort of reflect and say, right, is is this Mother Nature telling me that what I'm doing is probably I'm doing it in a way that is not helping myself? <laughs> no, that, that's, that's not, that's not saying stop, stop doing this. But for instance, if you're finding that you want that, that the way that you're collecting your information is making it hard for you to find so that you can you, you can imagine an outcome, but you can't find any way to describe the outcome that you want. 
that sometimes is a is a moment where you might say, hmm, actually, maybe I'll record, you know, this information in a slightly different way. So that, for instance, so I might need notes to know uh, which adornments they are on or which they have been on, because I know I can query that. Um, so if I, you know, in other words, it's give, giving yourself the opportunity to ask questions you know can be answered. So it's not yeah. saying, and don't think of it as a right, it's not a right, wrong thing. It's not like everything I've done now is rubbish and I'm straight in the bin. Absolutely not. It's just saying, okay, in order to do the thing that I want to do, if I can't do it in the way I imagine it happening, um, how can I, how can I just, you know, how can I begin to just change things? Maybe something that, you know, I just see as the title of a note might need to be. So for instance, court, a, a court of water might, might want to have water saved as uh, an, uh, an attribute value so that you can more precisely find things that are about water and aren't just making reference to water. I, you know, the, 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 the water in the title is incidental, if you see what I mean. Well, yeah, the, the amount will vary from batch to batch. Yeah. Um, all right. So at the moment, outline is seem <laughs> like a better way to organize. But don't forget, it's all the same. This is the thing that people miss. Is it's all the same information. Your notes haven't moved to a different space. The, the, the views are, are just different ways of showing you the same data. Right. Um, if, I, if I do it in an outline, then my recipe, batch 17 or batch 1 is going to be a, a container so uh, that in a view, I won't see them. Um, but yes. In outline view, I'll see everything I you know, okay, so here's another trick. If if you if you so if you wanted to have you know ten batches and you want them to all be on the same map, but you also want to be able to sort of do things with them in um, uh, in outline as well. Now and and knowing that you say if I well if I make a container for each batch, then I can't see it in the map, or I, I see a, you know I see a sort of I see a container of another map. What yeah. you could do is uh, you could leverage the fact that. Um, uh, that the outline, fun enough, has something that a bit like an adornment uh, can't be seen in other views, and that is a separator. Yep. So you could put a separator above your your contents, which would be invisible on the map. But if you put below the separator and before the next separator, all the things in batch one, and then you have a separator batch two, and that will show you that will give you the same uh, visual tailback as you would be getting in the map. You could do that. Right. Now, let's, 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 go ahead. Well, the, actually, I thought about this before, and, and a comment came up in discussion. I had mentioned previously that um, adornments make that separation quality in maps that the that that separator line does in in outline. And why aren't they coordinated? It was my question uh, some months ago. Um, because you know, right now, if I could, if they could all be the same, they could just switch from one to the other and and find everything. And the response back here was that um, the separators in outline perform a different or for a different purpose than the the uh, the outline than than the adornment in a map. So there's deliberate independence between those separators. <laughs> You know the environment in the map view and the uh, line in the outline view, which well, I, I, the, the, as the designers here and, and and tell me I'm wrong, but well, yeah, but this my, is my, my recollection is that they the, the, uh, adornments predate separators. Separators gave us a way of um, being able to separate an outline without having to use containers, but they weren't they they weren't as to, to my recollection added as being. Uh, a proxy for an adornment. Yeah. But, so what, what I described to you earlier is the fact that you can use a separator to give you the same sort of affordance, say this section of the outline, you know, which are all at the same level, but this between here and here, these are all the things that are effectively in this group. Right. That, I, that I, allows you to not nesting. And an accident of birth was, my recollection is separators weren't supposed to allow you to nest notes inside them, but people found out by accident you could and uh, there was no getting back because people who were using that were were very keen that 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 that's there so 
Um, it also means in that sense, separators immediately become more powerful. And one of the tricks it, people use it for is that um, they, in a map, or, or rather in the outline, they will nest notes under a separator, which removes them temporarily from the map because the separator is invisible. Therefore, everything inside the separator is invisible, but it's it, it's there. And, and of course, remembering the fact that all the notes are in the document, they're just not necessarily always in the view that we're looking at, or they may be in the view, but they're represented in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had just this. These are you know good idea. You know the the new way of finding things within an adornment is, is wonderful. What I had thought about before was keeping up to date adornments and up to date separators, but that's double the work. Um, and so I was, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, so um, yeah, we've got lots of options here, and that some that I was not aware of before. So one other thing that while you're exploring it, because you may be tempted to try and it might not have the result you want. So I might as well mention is that you, you may, are you familiar with the, 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 the description of smart adornment? Well, not enough to. Um, okay. So, so Mark, Mark uh, that's actually what I, that's yeah. actually what I'm demonstrating right now. So if you, if yeah. you look here, watch, watch this, this is very cool. So I've ran an agent that says batch name, let's look at this. I say batch name dot, uh, dot as string dot I contains batch. So find me all of the notes whose batch name con contains the word batch. In other words, find every note that's got, that's been as associated with a batch using that on add function we did before. You see that? Yeah. Okay. So then what I did is then I go into the agent and I, on the, on the, on the uh, adornment, I do, instead of doing an on add, I do a query. And I say, go find all of the notes whose batch name equals the name of the adornment, in this case, batch one. So let, let's do another one here. So I'm going to copy this one. And now we're going to say this one's batch two. And as soon as I do batch two, you're going to see in just a second when it updates, that milk is going to move on to batch two. Um, so this is another way that, you know, and, and resources in this one is, uh, and it's not going to because it's confused here. Let's do, let's do that for the purposes of this demo and update now. And you'll see that milk automatically moves on to batch two. So the other way to do it would be, and this could, I, I think this is gonna kind of give you the best of both worlds and that you can use the structure of the outline to be able to organize and, out, and outline your notes into a structure, um, but then use the map view via an agent to then you know dynamically generate that visual that you want. Um, to generate it, I want to look back in history. What did I do? Well, that's that's what I'm doing, right? So I'm saying, so if if you generate it, so if, if you were an outline view, so right now, if I go into the outline, you see we have right. no structure to any of this, right. right? So if I go here and I'm going to say batch one, so this note's going to be called batch one, and this note's going to be called batch two, and let's move our resources folder down. We don't need that anymore. And I'm now going to say carrots. Uh, these ones we had in batch one. This one we had in batch two. I don't know what Alice, an Alice of a quart of slice milk. it was. Slice. <laughs> a slice of a quart of milk. Um, boil for five minutes. Um, right. So there you've got your structure. Let's move this back down to agents to get them out of the way. And just to help us visualize this a little bit, we'll drop in a separator. Um, Right. So here are your different batches and you could do another one. You could say batch three. Right. And then you could yep. start adding elements into that as you as you go along. And then later, what you do is you'd run an eight. And then what you what I would recommend, too, in this context is we do an on add. And we say. Batch name. Batch. Name, oh, I need the dollar sign here. Sorry. Name equals, uh, ah, equals name parent, right? So by doing that, when I add a new item to this, let's say we say pinch of salt. And then you'll notice here, if I add that now, you'll see that batch, the name is batch one. 
And so then on this on add, we also want to say prototype equals uh, P note. So now that we've done that, when we add a new ingredient to this batch, it's going to assign the prototype and the name of the parent, which is bat which is batch one. So now if we add another one, we'll say pinch of pepper. By the way, this is what chemistry is. It's right. recipes. <laughs> Only it's that with food. And so that's what you're doing, right? And so you sent, this is where this on add functionality is just so incredibly powerful. Um, and you want to do that for every one of these. And typically what I would do, if I were that, once I started finding this kind of affordance here, I would call this P folder or P batch. And I would have the on add of the prototype P batch be what we were just doing like this. And then I would collapse these and I would give this a fancy little icon just to make it easier to see. And then I would say like that, and I make that batch. Those all get that. And now you have this ability, pinch of pepper, right? And you see that immediate, this pepper immediately got on batch three. Um. And then if you wanted that visual that we were doing before, you know, we could create, you could have, you could have it. So it pulls, it pulls all these into the prototype, you know, use the, uh, use the, um, this methodology of pulling those aliases onto the adornments, which we can walk, well, you know, do again later if you want, but that's kind of how I would, you know, I, I would see going about doing it. Okay. Now, the other thing that you might want to think about though, <laughs> is because, and again, we don't necessarily have the time to go through it, but if you think about the fact that milk is milk is milk, so you may want to actually have another resource note called milk. Well, and, yeah, and one recipe, if these were different batches, one I'd use half a cup, one I'd use Correct. a whole cup. So, so what I would, so one thing you could do, go down here and say quantity or volume. I don't know the right way to right right, right way to do it. So we're going to add a uh, a quantity element to milk, right? And what I could then do, I could see you doing it again. There, there'd be a, there's going to be a faster way to do this, um, but we then can make an alias of that milk and drop it in here, and we can copy that alias and drop that alias in here. So now we've got the concept of milk in both items. And if you notice the on ads, we got to go back and do here what we did before the plus equals because we don't want to lose our. And we're going to do it down here so it affects everywhere. Okay. So now um, you'll notice that I've got milk in both places. And let me uh, P note. And I got to reset it. Okay. Um, and I need to move it down here so it gets batch two. Did I not fix that? Oh, that didn't fix that one. There you go. Plus equals. Uh, you'll also, you could, because you changed batch name to a. Um... From a set yeah. to a string or vice versa, you need to change it back again. Yeah. So now, no, but now you'll see here, I've got milk, the, 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 the ingredient milk. There's only one note called milk. There's the aliases of that milk are in both batch two and batch one. And we can see that by looking at the fact that uh, these, uh, that the batch, the batch name attribute has been populated. So now I can, when I go do a search on milk, I can quickly see that milk is in batch one and batch two. And this is what I was thinking here in this milk. Um, we're going to put quantity here. That's why it didn't show up. Quantity. So in this milk, we used half a cup. Whoops. And in this milk, uh, we used two. No, you can't oh, do that. Because... That's not going to work because it's aliases. Yeah, so we'll have to figure that out. There's, but there's ways to go about doing that. Oh, the other way to do it. Ah, this is this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You call this one half cup milk, right? And I see what I want. I see where my mind was going. You call this one half cup milk, and you call this one two cups milk. Actually, you know what? We want to change these. So they're they're both. Ah, I'm gonna delete these notes. So we've got a note called uh, we've got a note called milk. Right. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to say ingredient. Uh, 
All right, and I'm gonna create the set for that. And what we're gonna do for our ingredients here, this is a little trick I do all the time, which is kind of fun. Um, we go here and we run a rule that says ingredients equals the collection collect children name. The reason why I want to do that is that way I won't misspell my... Uh, so if I now go up here and I want to add milk to this one, and you'll see I have an ingredient, so I can now relate this note. In, this note, this is one half cup milk. Okay, and it's related to the ingredient milk. And down here, this ingredient is two cups milk. And it is related to the ingredient milk. So later you can get, you can do a run that you can do a search that says, go find me every note that uses the ingredient milk. So I do, you know, ingredient I contains milk. So now I find everything that's related to milk, but then you can see, well, what batches was milked in and what quantities did I use milk in? And I personally wouldn't necessarily put the, the one half cup or, or two cups in the name of the note. I would put that into another attribute because then, because that's my measurement attribute that I would be using. And so now, and, and, and the, here's the beautiful thing about doing all of this. So now let's say you're doing this, this really cool study. So we're going to put this all into the concept of study. And I move all of these notes under here. And now I can run a report by putting applying a template. Add, go in here and add a template. And now we can run a report that says, here's all of my different studies. Batch one had these ingredients, batch two had these ingredients, and we could come up with a, a template that would render your report exactly the way you wanted to share it with your team. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, hopefully this was helpful, or at least stimulated some ideas for you. Well, yeah. So, so thank you. I I, I would do things a little differently. Um, yeah, some of, of it, and some of it is just I can take <clears throat> care of. It. So yeah. For the whole thing, and thank you for sharing your perspective. And that goes for both marks too. Yeah, and Mr. Bernstein, were you able to uh, come to a resolution on that other idea we had? Oh, uh, no, I'm running into all sorts of obstacles. There are Tinder boxes conveniently letting me omit adornments from searches. I'm yeah. I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. No worries. Not to put you on the spot. Okay. Um, so, hey, everybody on the call. So we went through a lot just now. Um, any comments, thoughts, ideas, reactions? Was that helpful? Did we learn something? It, it was helpful. It was interesting. Um, I just wanted to get one piece of clarification. Uh, yeah. You had, uh, you'd indicated that it's a, it's a good idea to use aliases in, um, in that example. So is the best practice to create aliases for existing notes or to create individual notes on an as needed basis? Because I would, I would think, and I don't know that this is the case. It's just logical to me that, Individual notes are individual objects that have individual attributes, but aliases are just references to one particular thing. Well, and, um, and if you recall, I initially indicated using aliases, and then we switched. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Because I realized I was wrong. Okay. In okay. this context, we want this two, this two cups milk is actually a different milk from one cup milk or half yep. cup milk. Yeah, and a different milk really, and it's it, and this milk is different because it's part of batch two, and this milk is different because it's part of batch one. However, both milks relate to the to the ingredient that is conceptually called milk. Yep. And so, one of the reasons why I do this for my, for my reports is, and I'll happily demonstrate this to you on on the side if you'd like. But I have terms and regulations and standards, so I have different notes for the context of. So I'll, I'll do very much like what uh, what we're suggesting for build to look at right now is you'll have different concepts and different structures of your items, but then you've got like, you know, call it a gloss. We'll move this up here. Call this the glossary of terms. So what is milk? Like independent of all of our other batches, what is the concept of milk? How do we define it? How does that go into the, how, how does that go into the report? So if I now look at this, I can go like, uh, I can go like this and you'll actually see, I'm going to drop this in here. 
uh go like this there we go and so you'll now and again this is not this is a, a poorly laid out template but you'll now see in this study i've got batch one i've got batch two and then i need to give this one its templates two there we go and so now you'll also see we have our resources folder that is now also defining each of the different resources so if we had a description here where we call this one blah, blah, blah for milk, you'll now see that we have a description of what milk actually is. Okay. Okay. Right? That's so it. I That's really it. love this. So when there's like these, this is why I call it a resources folder. When there's this universal atomic concept or idea that then, but relates. So, it, you know, it, re, you know, this milk relates to this milk and that it is fundamentally milk, but this milk is different because it's two cups and was done in a batch. Got it. I put a link in the sidebar about intrinsic attributes because that's one thing. If if you start using aliases, you'll want to understand it. Basically, that so for instance, for some attributes, an alias has to have its own value rather than that of the original. The, the most obvious case is if you have a note and its alias on the same map, they're going to have a different x y position, which is something that's stored as a, a thing. So in most cases, or the original and all the aliases share the same um, attribute values, but in some special cases, um, as the so-called intrinsic, um, the alias w can, will or can have a different value from the original, but you can read that up in slow time. Um, uh, and I see Mark put a comment up that he's cracked. Yeah, he, I, saw his, I saw his eureka moment, so let's just give one <laughs> more. So here's the thing too, when you're looking at templates in Tinderbox, um, You'll notice here I popped in here and said, like, I want to I want these H2s to be colored red. So I've got I've quickly gone in and changed the template. So now when I go and run these, those become red, not black. So there's really again, there's so as you start developing your templates, you can get a really sophisticated output of what you want from all of these. And again, when if we have more time, I'll show you some uh, some more elements of this later. But like in my templates, for example, I'll turn these into bulleted lists. And I'll have the citations associated with them. And then I'll have, in some cases, the text will be there. In other cases, they won't. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. This is very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's really, really wickedly cool. And Mr. Bernstein, we saw you go Eureka like this. So let's see what you got. Eric, you're muted. And, and Bill, great Me question. Too. That stimulated a really nice conversation. Good. Got more sophisticated than I anticipated. Well, unfortunately, that, you know, that was probably my fault, but. No, I mean, so this is good. <laughs> it, it generated a lot of thought. Okay. With luck, you have a, a window that has a test adornment and containers A and B in the note called probe. Uh, the, the problem here is that uh, we uh, need to go through the document and ask for every note, A, is A on top of an adornment? And if so, what is that adornment? Uh, and we can map this into lots of variants, but this is the underlying structure of the question. Uh, so we begin by getting a list of all the notes. My list equals collect all path, or find true will do the same thing. Uh, and I have a user list, uh, result list as a place to store the results. For every note, my list dot each X, I ask, is that note inside the test adornment? And if it is, I put that note's path into the result list. And as we see, my list is a list of all the paths of all the notes. And result list is just butter, which had been on test adornment. I like that. So this is this is a little bit cockamamie. And notice that this is a solution that's going to scale very poorly because we're 
we've got a loop on all of the nodes. And then we've got a loop that has to look at all of the siblings. And so, so for really big documents, this is going to take a while. But for every big document, this kind of uh, modified query is a, intrinsically a complicated query. But that had me going for quite some time. So uh, it's so, so, actually so Mark, tricky. For, Mark, for a map, um, assu assuming we're talking about a dormant on the current map, you actually only need siblings, don't you? That that that's that's true. But I was thinking in the general sure, case, sure, sure, sure. We, we we've got this document and we've got a milk that's somewhere, but we want to know what adornment it's on, and we don't know where it is. So we really do have to go through all of the document looking for a milk that's on an adornment. Now, now, where I could see this being really great, Mark, is let's say you did get down the path of you had this massively huge document. And you're like, okay, I, I didn't, I didn't start with my original suggestion of using the on add functions, right? So I don't actually know where everything is. You could actually use your method once, and then have the action actually name the adornment that that, that the note's sitting on. And so it might, it might yeah. have to cycle through and it would take a while. But once that's done once, then you're good to go. And then you can then go down the on add methodology, for example. That would be another way I could see that being really useful. And for what it's worth, this would have been much easier if it weren't adornments. Yeah. But Tinderbox hides adornments from agents, and so that made life a little bit harder. And I'd forgotten how well we hit adornments. Yeah. I, I find the inside thing super cool, though. I didn't know that about adornments. Yes, uh, Dave, you were going to say something? Um, yeah, actually, uh, Mark, if you could bring up the uh, the action code that you referenced. Sure. Let Mark, me... if you can email me that file, I'll uh, include it in the notes. Okay. I'll share. And one, and there we are. Yep. So in, in my list, I see the collection function is iterating through all notes and it's grabbing <laughs> uh, it's grabbing the it's grabbing the path. How is it that you reference the path later on in the if query or the if statement down below? Like my understanding is that you're you're adding the path if uh, if it's found. Is that not the case? Well, what what I'm doing is I am evaluating. I'm constructing an expression yep. that I'm evaluating. Notice that I'm having to do an eval because I'm having to ask the note if it's inside test adornment. I don't inside test adornment tells me whether I am inside test adornment. So I'm having to inject that into the other note, which is what this eval is doing. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thanks. So, so in other words, what you're saying is, it just this, Dave, just so we can go through this. So my list equals collect all all notes. So he's collecting all of the notes in the file, yep. and then he's and then he's clearing out the results list just so we're clean from the very beginning. And then he's saying, and then, uh, Mark, can you go back and show that again? Sure. Sorry. And, th and then what he's saying for each item in my list. So what the each what the dot each is doing is saying my list dot each x is saying for each item in my list for item number one, item two, item number three, yep. all the way to the end. Yep. Um, for the for the time being, we're going to give it the variable x. That x could be anything. It could be v list. It could be you know item yep. list. Whatever you want it to be. Yep. And then and then so essentially he's going e going through and saying okay evaluate the item. That first item in, in in the list. Evaluate the second item in the list and see. It, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then test if it's inside the endornment. And then, if it is, you're you're making the result list equal to X, meaning the uh, the, the list item. Okay. Now that's you're that's you're helpful. adding it. Did, did that was that helpful? That kind of that that was that was helpful. Thank yeah. you. In my particular case where I've got a needle in a haystack, and I don't know which adornment my note's under. Say, suppose I had 20 adornments. Um, I would need 20 variables, because you're... Uh, no, I, th I think what you're looking for is any adornment. Uh, yes. And 
Uh, I, I think that's a straightforward generalization of that. Uh, I'm not sure I can wrap my mind up around it in live TV, but I can go back and check that. That's okay. Um, you know, we've, we've got um, lots to work with from today's discussion. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Um, any other topics that we want to discuss? And if not, we can move on to our, our chat GBT demo. All right. Any other I'll topics? On chat GBT, I have a friend who's going to graduate and had to give a graduation, has to give a graduation speech. So she put a little query into chat moon something or other, and it came up with this wonderful speech on, for graduation. It took her 30 seconds to get this. I'd like to thank my family and friends for you. Know, so I, she just sent it. She didn't, she didn't do this, you know, but she, she just, I mean, she humor. She didn't actually do this for graduation, um, but I said, "Wouldn't that be funny if she, there are five graduates and they all have the same speech because they <laughs> all use Chat GPT?" All right. So, so let's 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 jump in and share the screen. Mr. Alexander, are you with me? Let's see. Is Roger still around? There he is. Roger. Can you join? Uh, come come off mute. Participate. All right, maybe he's not active. All right, so we'll show you what Roger and I have pulled together. So um, what we've done is we basically and I'll, I'll show you the end result at this point, and then we'll kind of back back uh, back step on what we've done. So essentially, we've got a, a note, and we're call, we're giving it a prototype um, of question, or, or it could also be prompt if you want. You'll know, we'll call this prompts. Right, because that's what ChatGBT does. It's essentially it's calling it prompts. So in the text body of the text, we're saying, what is the meaning of life? And if we check that little box, Tinderbox is now going out through a Python script that Roger wrote and is now coming back with a response. And it's saying, your prompt was, the, uh, what is the meaning of life? The response is the meaning of life is subjective, different for everyone. And let's go ahead and ask another question. Um, prompt two and go add the prompt and we could say, what is the, uh, Mr. Anderson, what's the right question for getting it to get 42? What's the universal question? What's Douglas? Uh, what's the like, meaning of life, the universe and everything? Yeah. What is the meaning? And, th and thankfully GPT is clever enough to get that right. Universe. What is the meaning of life and the universe and everything? No, life, the universe, and everything. It should get it anyway. It's, it's close enough to the Douglas Adams. So. Universe and everything. All right, so if we ask it that question, okay, it goes out, comes back. Sometimes it can be slow. Sometimes it can be fast, and it comes back, and it says the answer is a matter of opinion. Okay, I didn't I didn't ask the question right. Um, <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah, we got to get the question right. Um and then I'll so, show Michael, you. you could say something like, it, in Why, the, comma, the universe and everything. I don't think you, you need the article, the. Mm. All right. So, uh, what is the meaning of life, comma, the universe and everything? That should come to us to do it again. You may not need that second comma, but we'll see. What it comes back with. There we go. How about the answer 42. to the ultimate question? All right. Yeah, so the answer is 42. That's what I was actually looking for. All right, so essentially what, we, what we're doing here is we're through Tinderbox, we're pinging ChatGPT, and it's coming back with responses. Now, how did, we, how did we go about doing that? Now, I loosely and I very loosely say we because it was about uh, – I actually started asking the question about seven months ago, but in earnest about three weeks ago, I called up Rod, uh, Roger and said, can you help figure – can you help us uh, – Get Tinderbox uh, uh, integrated in with um, with uh, ChatGPT, and he dutifully worked on that. So what we did, or again he did, is we uh, he if you go to the help menu and you open up in Tinderbox, if you go help and then um, actually go do it again, go help and then it's called reveal support folder in Finder. Um, this is a support folder that's supporting in Tinderbox. And what Mark, uh, what uh, Roger has done is he stuck a scripts uh, directory in that folder 
and then stuck in an open AI directory. And then we actually have our, um, let me make sure I get this right, right one because I don't want to disclose that anything proprietary. Uh, yeah, that's the right one. Okay. So um, what we, if in chat GBT, if you have an account, you can get a long, what's called an, open, an, uh, an API string. So the only thing that's sending in this file here, which I'm not going to show you because I don't want to disclose my API string on public uh, radio here, um, is the, a, a value sitting in there. And then if you go into uh, the Python script that Roger developed, you can go ahead and open that up really quick. Where is, there it is. So this Python script is essentially, um, you know, taking the variables of the ChatGBT API Passing in the open the uh, uh, the um, API key for the user, uh, querying uh, chat G- querying chat GP and waiting for the response, and then it's printing the response to the terminal. And then what happens there is when we print the response in the terminal, if we go down to the hints, you'll see what we're doing here is we're essentially when I'm running when I'm triggering that boolean up here. If you see up here, I'm checking this box. Well, what that's hap- what's that doing here is it's saying the function is constantly running. So it says if run ChatGPT is true, then what we want you want you to do is we want you to create a variable called vResponse, and then we want to run the run command, and then pass that Python script. Uh, you know, run that Python script um, uh, via the run command and pull the text of that particular note into the Python script. What that then does is, um, and so that that's how you actually get ChatGPT to go, you know, ask and find a question. And when it finds the question, if you have, uh, if the run script, if you're printing the terminal, the run script will, uh, the result of that run script will be then populated into the variable response. And then from there, we're saying Tinderbox, create a note, uh, create a path for that note. And here, and so up here, you'll see here, what we're saying is make the path of the note, the uh, uh, of the current note. So if I've got prompt here selected and I check this, which I'll do right now, what it's doing is it's now saying, okay, V path is equal to the current note. And then what we say is then make the response. So then add the response plus the, the response number. And so that's how we're getting this new note created here. So if I do that again, you're essentially saying, when you get a response, create a response, iterate on the number and make it a child of this current note. Um, that's what we're doing with this with, with this particular step. We're then saying now that you've got this note that you've just uh, cobbled together, we want you to now create that note, and now we want you to make the text of this note equal to the date of now, the format properly formatting that date, and then interject the prompt. Put a couple line breaks in, stick in our prompt, put a couple line breaks in, stick in the word response, and then add the response. And then what we want you to do is. Um, you know, and then here I've been estimating the costs for how much each uh, each transaction um, is costing. It's like you know, minimal, but over time I want to calculate how much I'm spending playing with ChatGPT, and then make the uh, the uh, the the is run ChatGPT equal to false. So in doing that, then this is here. You see, we get today's date. So you can see I've asked this question at ten thirteen. I asked this question at ten eighteen, and I asked it again at ten eighteen. Uh, and that was the prompt that I asked it. And then this is the question I've got. And it roughly costs this much in in in, in pennies, right? Um, so basically, and, and, and te- the way ChatGPT estimates the cost of a sol- service is it's one token for every four, roughly four characters. And um, you get a thousand tokens. You get, a th- uh, it's one token for a thousand, uh, for four characters. You get a thousand characters per token, something like that. So roughly twenty dollars is equivalent to about seven hundred and fifty thousand words. Is uh, is how I've estimated out this um, uh, this effort. And so, long story short, that's all. That, you know, I, I say that's all we needed to do. I mean, Roger's been very kind in saying it wasn't that hard. But really, all all we did was build the Python script on the Mac OS. Um, you know, we need to, we installed Anaconda, we installed the uh, open, AI, uh, open AI API, uh, and, um, and, then, uh, and then we created a Python shell to be able to run this Python script. Uh, and that was it. Uh, and so now we can successfully interrogate ChatGBT right from Tinderbox and create notes. So let me give you another one, which I find really interesting, uh, PIMS Research. 
And if I can say uh, prompt and we say, uh, please give me 10 per, uh, personal information management systems. Uh, give me 10 published personal information management system adoption research studies in the last from the last 10 years. 10 years oh, typo form include uh, a URL to the study. What, what did you say? Uh, typo type uh, form for you from or okay from thanks. Yep. Thanks. It, uh, now, this is where I've learned that ChatGPT is absolutely a professional bullshitter, right? Uh -huh. it, it's going to make up 10 research studies that don't exist. And it will actually give URLs to those 10 research studies that don't exist. Um, so I, I read an article. It was hysterical. It was extolling the virtues of ChatGPT and how amazing it is. And it is. It's very exciting. Uh, and then the author said, my only problem with it is when it's wrong, it's confidently wrong. And that just made me start laughing because it, it absolutely positions answers as, as a bona fide, uh, bona fide go. This is the truth. You're, you're really going to enjoy this. It's like, right. wait, that's wrong. So, um, here, so here you go. This okay. is exploring the adoption of personal information management systems, exploratory study, 2009 URL doesn't exist. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've experienced this. And uh, well, here, here's, yeah, keep going. I stick them in the information archive. Uh, for instance, uh, just sometime around Christmas, nearly all of Texas A&M's uh, 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 spatial hypertext papers winked out because the was a CSDL subdomain of TAMU EDU was closed. Uh, and when he asked the librarians, he said, what's the problem? You go look it up on the internet. I thought, well, yes. <laughs> Maybe librarians haven't quite got with the whole web thing yet, but uh, as it happens, it's in um, it's in uh, the Internet Archive. So if you if you, aside from the GPT and the because I don't think it's it's going to make up a URL. Um, so if if it gives you a URL and doesn't work, it's it's well worth trying um, the Internet Archive. All right, um, well, it, may, it may well have that paper. Okay, that that's good. Let's see if that's the case. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing another one too, and say, give me the authors now. And now it's giving me authors. Yeah, go, Google Scholar. Uh, just type in the name, title. I, I've done. I've done that, and it, it comes back with nothing. I, I have had really? GPT completely. Mm -hmm. met, it it won't make up a reference. What it will do is it will confidently give you a reference that does exist, but which contains doesn't contain at all the subject that it it, it has confidently told you is in there. Well, it, it's just terrible. it's the problem of it being a probability model. It sort of got to the edge of something. You thought, oh well, this it it the the following must must probability in probability terms follow on from what it suggests, and it doesn't. Um, it's just it, you know it's, it's a limitation of large language models. So they don't know what they don't know. Right. So, Michael, this is super exciting. Thanks for thanks for the demo. Um, I've got a question that's that's not directly related, but it would be so helpful to understand if there was a way using Apple script that you could tick that checkbox that you've established. Um, if, uh, if you get back to, uh, back to a, a new, uh, a new note to do a query. Yeah. So if, is it possible to check is run chat GPT um, via Apple script control? I could see crazy ways. Uh, to integrate this into a lot of stuff that I'm doing, if that's the case. Well, it, 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 and this is where I need Roger Alexander's help because, again, I, I, I am the, I am the, the the monkey turning the box right now. Uh, it, it, behind the scenes, I'm the only. All I know how to do is turn the crank. At, yep. the, at this point, um, it's really Roger that's driving the Python script. Now, my my reaction is, if if Apple Script can trigger a a Python API, then I would not see why you couldn't. Right, the ChatGPT API is open. You can integrate to it. I just don't, I don't know enough to know about how one integrates to the API through AppleScript. 
Sure. So the the question I guess I have is is the uh, is the checkbox is run ChatGPT a structure within uh, within Tinderbox? And my assumption no, no, is that's, that's, that's the case. Pure, that's purely Tinderbox. So what I've yep. done is I've created a boolean in Tinderbox called is run ChatGPT. Yep. So I'm going to go back to my script here. So, so, so the answer to the question of Apple Script is is yes because uh, you can run an Apple Script that would. Uh, can talk to the active Tinderbox document, find the right note, set, be, be, because although it's a tick box on screen, it's a, it's a Boolean field. Yeah, so you check. set it so, to true. So the, 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 the short answer is yes. Obviously, um, some implementation required. Sure, sure. You see here I'm saying is run equals true, is run equals false. That's just in accordance with me. So when Roger first did it, he did it using stamps, right? And for me, I didn't want to, you know, I could have easily just gone like this. And applied the stamp and i'm like well i don't want to do that because that's extra steps i just want to check the box sure and so that's all, that's all we did was yeah you because know, you could have a you know, similarly if you watch this let's go in here and we go to stamp right and if i take if i create a stamp chat gpt and i take all of this code up to here and just drop that into a stamp Right, that could easily uh, be um, triggered from a stamp. Sure. Right. Yep. You know, and again, I'm, I'm. Oh, I know what I did. I missed the. Um, I didn't declare the variable, so that's obviously not going to work. Right. So now, if you do that, okay. Now it's going to go out and because uh, and, and find it. So this was just a way for me to uh, to make it faster. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we're playing with it. We're experimenting with it. It's super cool. It works. I don't, I don't necessarily know if I'm comfortable to like explain to people how we set up the Python infrastructure or, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to te be teaching people how to install open AI, um, on their hard drives just yet because of the warranty issue of, you know, you know, do this might screw up your total computer. I don't know how to, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do that kind of command line work yet just yet, but I just wanted to show you that it is possible. Maybe when, um, we're in Roger comes back or in, uh, in future ones, we can kind of walk through some of that as well. Wasn't hard. It just took some steps of someone that was more confident of saying, type this in the terminal to install these apps. All right. Very yeah, cool. Great. Very cool. Okay. Well, we're right around the top of the hour. We've got about two minutes left. Any other last minutes, comments, thoughts, ideas, questions? If not, I think we can end it for the day. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, Mr. Uh, Anderson, you mind hanging around a little bit? Okay. See you, everybody.